Hi guys. Put this on here. Hi guys. Okay, so this one uh, we are going to talk about the uh, a new new topic that's the endocrine system. And uh, so the endocrine system has uh, many many parts, as you probably already know that we have so many like uh, endocrine glands to release different hormones from different glands. And, um, and so it's kind of diverse. We will, we will talk, kind of go through all this in two, in two, in two topics, in two that portion. Uh, this one we start by, so we basically start from the, the top to the bottom. So we will start by talking about the the endocrine system in the hypothalamus, pituitary glands, and the thyroid with this one. And uh, in the next portion, we will talk about the uh, adrenal glands and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and what? Uh, pancreas. Yes. All right. So. So this kind of show you the location, the anatomy of all these glands. If you if you have studied the if you learned the anatomy before, this is uh, like a quick review of all this. So it's cross anatomy that show you the location of different glands. So when we talk about the endocrine, we kind of focus on the glands that produce hormones. Um, in particular, those hormones that can be released into the into the blood and uh, and the circulating throughout the entire body. So their effects to the entire body is systemic. That it's not just um, neighboring uh, organs. Um, they diffuse into the blood. So they they basically carry by the blood to. And the blood basically flow all through throughout the entire 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 body, providing the oxygen to each cell. So this uh, this uh, this hormone will be able to uh, carry by the blood and the the, the distribute it throughout the entire body. Um, the hormones, the, the, the endocrines include the, from the top, include this uh, hypothalamus. That's basically, it's in the brain. So hypothalamus is the content center of, about, of a lot of the, our body's autonomic reaction. That's respiratory center, that is the um, small receptor center that control our thirst, control our hunger, um, a lot of sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic reaction also uh, kind of initiated from this area. So that's the hypothalamus and that, that, that inside of the hypothalamus, hypothalamus it, it, it has a uh, Neurons. He has a uh, like endocrine cells to produce the hormones. Following that, we have the uh, pineal glands. Pineal glands release the uh, melatonin, uh, so that is an uh, important hormone to regulate our sleep. Following that, we have this um, um, pituitary glands. Pituitary glands is kind of like extension from the hypothalamus. Uh, pituitary gland has a anterior and a posterior portion. Um, so that 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 one is essentially the center of whole endocrine system because it releases different hormones, and each hormone basically has the capacity to regulate other glands. So let me get this thing. Where 
this highlighter. Is this highlighter? Oh yeah, but it's not a highlighter. I need I need a not this one. Where is it? All right. Where is my weird? Yeah, I guess you probably can see this uh, red dot here. I, I was hoping that there is a um, pointer here. Here, laser pointer here. All right, so yeah, so this um, um, pituitary glands will release hormone to regulate all other glands, uh, it affects the Thyroid glands to release thyroid hormone. It affects the adrenal cortex to release uh, uh, adrenal cortex hormones. Um, they attack. They they they, they uh, release hormone to regulate our gonads. Um, so that is essentially the like uh, the center or the major regulator of the entire endocrine system. And following that, we have this thyroid gland. Thyroid gland, gland is located right in our, in our, in our like, uh, vocal cord, around our vocal cord. And um, that releases the thyroid hormone, T3, T4, uh, embedded in the thyroid gland, we also have the parathyroid gland. This parathyroid gland is important to regulate our calcium um, in our blood. Then we have this adrenal glands. Adrenal glands contains adrenal cortex and uh, adrenal medulla. Adrenal cortex um, uh, is a steroid, release steroid hormone, so it's kind of unique. Um, so it's not because majority of the hormones are synthesized like like you know proteins um, but the steroid hormones are derivatives of cholesterol we also have the pancreas right here pancreas is uh, contains several hormones it's all related to our body's energy uh, the fuel uh, to regulate our intakes of the glucose, transport of the glucose. And then we have this uh, reproductive uh, system. So this is the hormone endocrine, release the secrets, release the hormone into the blood. They circulate in the, to in the entire body and uh, they will act on the specific organ to cause specific actions. So let's start by talking about this hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. If you already taken the endocrine system, this will be uh, a quick review before we move on to the next topic. So this portion essentially is part of the brain. So they contains the neuronal cells. So the neuronal cells, uh, later we will learn that neuronal cells release neurotransmitter. A neurotransmitter basically acts on the postsynaptic side. But here it's unique that they release not neurotransmitter, they release hormones. So in a way, it's chemical. The major difference is that neurotransmitter acts on the postsynaptic side, so it's uh, it's called paracrine. It's the 
chemicals that acts on the neighboring cells. However, here the they this 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 similar like neuronal cells they release it into the blood. So they have chance to flow through the entire body and uh, act on not just the neighboring cells but to the remote organ and uh, conduct the uh, cause the effects to be like uh, uh, like systemic effects. So let's start by talking about the pituitary because this one is the center of all this. It's easier to see it that way, the center of all this. Um, so pituitary has the two lobe. We have the anterior lobe, that's right here. This is the anterior lobe. And we also have the posterior lobe. So we have two lobes. These two lobes, um, although they are kind of like two sides of one organ, they actually are in a way very different in a way that the anterior lobe is separated from the posterior lobe. And the posterior lobe actually is an extension from the hypothalamus. So anterior lobe, is separated. Posterior instead is not. It's connected with the hypothalamus. Okay. So posterior is relatively more straightforward. So let's look at the posterior first. Uh, posterior here, you can see that here is the posterior, but there's no way you can separate the posterior from the hypothalamus because they are essentially the extension from the hypothalamus. Here is the hypothalamus and uh, the cells in the hypothalamus are neuronal cells in a way that they have long axons extended to the posterior. So if you want to say that you want to separate hypothalamus and the posterior, you have to cut through cells. So it's, it's, they, they, they are connected. And so when you ask that, where are these hormones released and where are these hormones synthesized, there actually could be a different answer. Their synthesis are in fact in the, are, are in fact in the originally from the hypothalamus. However, their release could be in the posterior pituitary glands. Okay, so these neurons, these neurons basically are located in hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is the region contains a lot of the uh, sensor to detect our body's homeostasis, and uh, and that will, will trigger them to release the hormone to be released into the into the into the blood. So what are the hormones involved in this pathway? Hypothalamus synthesize, release it, synthesize it, produce it, and release in the posterior pituitary glands. What are these hormones? In the end, uh, turn out it is very, it's relatively uh, simple. That's two hormones are involved. Compared to the anterior, you will see that there are a list of hormones. But the posterior is relatively um, simpler that we have two major hormones released in the posterior. These two hormones are ADH and uh, oxytocin. So ADH is the antidiuretic hormone. Yeah, we heard it somewhere, right? We, we, we talk about it. It's the hormone to regulate our kidney to reabsorb the fluid. We, we, we just talk about it. So you should, you should be familiar with that. And that's right here in the posterior pituitary gland. Um, and so as you can see here, ADH and oxytocin. ADH is initially synthesized 
in a group hormone, this group hormone is, is called paraventricular nucleus. And then they transport through the exon transport, transport this hormone into the posterior pituitary gland. And then these hormones are released here. Um, another hormone is the oxytocin. Oxytocin also are oxytocins are produced from the hypothalamus and they are produced from another group hormone called supraoptic nucleus. So right here, supraoptic nucleus. And, uh, and they are transported along the exon to the exon terminal and they're released in the posterior pituitary gland. Here we go, you got two hormones. So here, here are quiz questions that you will see um, uh, from these slides. For example, that uh, which hormones are produced uh, in the, uh, released in the posterior? Uh, you should pick the ADH or the oxytocin. Now this could be the ADH, uh, uh, ACTH, for example. Uh, Eldastron, for example. So you need to pick the hormone that match the location. So when we when you study these hormones, you basically need to kind of organize it in a way that location and uh, function. Um, was this hormones located? Was their target? And what's their function? And another quick question is that um, the neuron groups in hypothalamus to produce ADH or oxytocin. Uh, the neuronal group, the nucleus, produce the oxytocin is the supraoptic nucleus. The neurons, neuron groups to produce ADH to yeah, produce, synthesize, the ADH is the paraventricular nucleus. So the way I memorize it is that we have the the hypothalamus basically is next to the ventricle as well as the uh, optic chiasm. You, if you don't know, you, you should know that it's very near the optic nerve. That's why we have the paraventricular that is near the ventricle and we also have supraoptic is located on top of the optic nerve. And uh, so we basically have these two. And uh, I would, I, I, the way I remember it is that supraoptic is O in it, so it's oxytocin. And the paraventricular is near the ventricular, is like water, because ventricle contains cerebral spinal fluid. So it has a lot of fluid it contains water. And ADH is about antidiuretic, right? So it's about water. Um, so that's, that's how I memorize it. And you will see that in the quiz question. So here we go. You got 100% because I already told you the question you will see in the, in the exam. So just another picture showing you that ADH is released from the paraventricular nucleus. Oxytocin is produced from the supraoptic nucleus. And then they are transport down to the posterior pituitary gland and the radius there. Now, let's talk about each one of this, ADH. Well, we actually already learned it. So here basically is an overview of what we have learned. We kind of put them all together. We built some foundations in the past that you know the function of the kidney, you know the um, uh, function of the yeah, kidney. <laughs> now we put them all together with the brain, okay? 
as well as related to the cardiovascular system because fluid is very important like a portion in the in the in the cardiovascular system that affects the blood pressure all right so what's adh adh is also called vasopressin and so from the name you know that it acts on vasoconstriction and uh, um, the the uh, in the hypothalamus um, it can detect the it contains the osmoreceptor so basically it detects the blood sickness right we talk about that and so if the body lose fluid dehydration like you are working in the desert or you eat a lot of salty food your body not necessarily lose water by eating salty food but your blood becomes thick right you have the higher osmolarity in the blood then you will need water because we want to our body would have this system right to maintain a stable environment is called homeostasis and so the body what we will do is it will do two things one will ask you to drink water in the same time it will release adh to act on the kidney to reabsorb the water so that's the adh adh um, as a vessel present, uh, ADH can act on the uh, uh, collecting tubule and the collecting ducts, acts on this uh, epithelium cells in the tubule, acts on the luminal sites, and the two opens up to uh, to like uh, promote to insert several water channel. This water channel is are called aquaporin channel. So they are, when they are opened, water will see the holes and uh, the outside world of that tubule is the, is the uh, medulla, renal medulla, and the renal medulla, we already know that it's is hyper hyper osmotic so water see that outside has is very attractive that is so dry so water will see that hole and diffuse out and that's how we reabsorb water uh, adh can also act on the um, vessel to increase the increase the uh, vessel constriction and uh, all together, they actually, they, they overall, they increase blood pressure because they reabsorb water, increase the CO, they cause the vessel constriction, increase the TPR. And uh, so the effects of ADH is to, is to cause blood pressure increase. That, that also makes sense. When you are losing water, say if you're losing water, your blood pressure would drop because your fluid is reduced. And, uh, and uh, you, want, you need to maintain a certain, say you're in the desert, right? You're walking and uh, you sweat a lot. Your body fluid lost a lot. And, uh, and when your body fluid lost a lot, your heart can only pump this so many, so much of the fluid. And that fluid is losing, is dropping, and uh, the pressure will gradually drop. But, but we, you need you need some blood pressure in order to push the blood to maintain the brain function. Um, brain requires a certain level of blood pressure to keep it alert, to keep it awake. So if if the blood pressure is too low, you eventually gonna faint which is not good. And so the ADH can, in addition to supply the water that our body needs, it can, the, the, the other effect is that it increases blood pressure to, 
to, to kind of regain this lost blood pressure. All right, so just a visual like a review of what we have learned. This is kidney and uh, the unit function of the kidney. The functional unit of the kidney is the nephron, it's right here. And the nephron has a tubule. We have the proximal, look handy, distal, right? And then here is the collecting tubule, collecting ducts. And this is the region that ADH acts on. ADH acts on, open the aquaporin channel. And uh, the, here is the kidney uh, cortex and the medulla. And in the medulla, the environment is very salty, very dry. So water, when we open the water channel, the aquaporin channel, water see the opportunity, so water will diffuse out. And then we will not pee it out. We will preserve this fluid and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so when we, when we are very um, like a blood osmolarity is high, ADH can open more water channel and then we can absorb, reabsorb this water back to our body. If we don't have the ADH, then water is not reabsorbed as much and then we will pee it out and that's the disease called diabetes insipidus. Now, the other question is, the next question is, how do we regulate the ADH? ADH release is regulated through two parallel pathway. One is the RAN angiotensin system, the RAAS. The other is the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus. So these two can both cause ADH release. Okay. So in the running angiotensin to pathway, the initial like engine to trigger all this is in the kidney. And in the kidney, it can be triggered by two, by three um, causes. The increased sympathetic, exon it, reduced blood pressure detected by the kidney, reduced sodium flow to the distal tubule. Uh, specifically, it's in the macular densa detect that dropped sodium amount can all cause kidney to release raining from the juxtaporomerular cells. Raining then will convert angiotensin two to angiotensin one. Angiotensin one is converted to angiotensin two by the enzyme called ACE. This one is located in the pulmonary circulation and the ACE2 uh, is getting famous now is because that's where the coronavirus see the channel and enter into our body. And, uh, and then angiotensin 2 can act in the brain, angiotensin 2 flow around in the blood going to the brain, then acts on the hypothalamus to trigger it to release ADH in the posterior pituitary gland. And that's one pathway to do that. The other pathway is, so here is again the macular densa. Uh, uh, here is the, uh, the just glomerular cells restraining and uh, the sympathetic stimulus reduce blood pressure or reduce concentration of sodium in the macular densa can trigger it to release renin. And that, the, the uh, chain reaction following that is the release of the ADH. Another mechanism is, the, is from, not from the kidney, but from the 
hypothalamus. Hypothalamus has group of the sensor called uh, osmol osmol receptors in the hypothalamus, and that detect the plasma osmolarity. If our blood is very thick, meaning that it's it's uh, it has higher osmolarity is too high. So the regular osmolarity in the blood is about 300 milliosmol. And uh, if it's too high, then we need to drink some more water. In the same time, we need to, we need to preserve our fluid in the body. So it will tell us to drink some more water, thirst. It will also trigger the release of the ADH. And that way we can reabsorb water from the kidney. So that's the mechanism to regulate ADH. Now the next one is oxytocin. Oxytocin is also released from the posterior pituitary gland. Uh, here we didn't really, we are not going to talk a lot more about the oxytocin in brief. The oxytocin, the the uh, the major function that people know is that it's the function to uh, like uh, eject the milk from a mother. So when basically that when the baby like a suck the nipple and uh, and that will trigger re a reflex. And that reflex will cause the mother to release oxytocin and the oxytocin will then um, act on the uh, muscle in the, and the to, to, cause the, to cause the ejection of the milk. So that's the mechanism that uh, you, we, 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 we probably, we know the most. Another, but in, no, oxytocin is not only in female. Oxytocin also released in male. So, been a while that people question why why do male need oxytocin uh, if it's for the producing the milk for the baby. So it's not just the that function. It also has a function in the brain, and uh, its function is to affect our mood. Uh, so it can affect our feeling about uh, bondage and uh, love. And uh, so that is, uh, that is why that both male and the female has this uh, hormone uh, in the brain and uh, that's has this uh, 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 effects to affect our influence, our like uh, uh, attitude and the behavior. So that's the posterior pituitary gland, and the next one is the anterior. The anterior pituitary gland. Um, are those hormones produced and released locally in the anterior pituitary gland. So it's not like the posterior that is produced in the hypothalamus and released in the posterior. The anterior is produced in anterior and released in anterior pituitary gland. So let's take a look at, so here is, are the cells in the anterior pituitary glands, they are produced and released here. Let's look at what are these hormones. We have actually a list uh, of the hormones. And these hormones, basically, the major function is to regulate other endocrine systems. So for example, that uh, the, here we, we have the growth hormone, um, 
it can stimulate liver to secrete insulin like growth hormone growth factor one, IGF one, and that will then cause the growth of the body. So this one acts on the liver. Uh, anterior pituitary gland also release uh, adrenal corticotropin hormone or ACTH and uh, adrenal means adrenal cortex, adrenal corticotropin, adrenal cortex. So they act on the adrenal cortex. And then adrenal cortex will release another group of hormones to act on the target organ. So you can see that this hormone from the anterior pituitary gland basically is the hormones to act on the other endocrine system. And uh, the other endocrine system will release hormones to, to cause the effects to other portion of the body. Uh, thyroid stimulating hormone TSH uh, acts on the thyroid glands, prolactin to uh, to uh, to act on the uh, mammary gland, gonadotropin hormone to act on the uh, gonads, and uh, um, and uh, so that is the hormones from the anterior pituitary. Uh, we will later talk about, for example, focus on the adrenal cortex. So we will mention about ACTH again. We will also focus on the thyroid glands in the following lecture. So we will mention about the TSH again. Um, but you, you get it. You, you, you should have the idea that the anterior pituitary gland release a list is a small organ, but it's very uh, complex that it produces so many different type of hormone to regulate the other endocrine system and uh, their, their functions. So this one is a table from the textbook that um, the anterior pituitary gland right here, anterior pituitary glands, and their target organ. And in the target organ, you can see that it produced another group of the chemicals from that. And the one thing you also need to see here, I want you to see here is that the anterior pituitary glands, in fact, is closely uh, uh, specifically regulated by the hormone release from the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus also produced another group of hormone match the hormones released from the anterior pituitary glands. So in the anterior pituitary gland, you have the growth hormone. In the hypothalamus, you release the uh, GHRH hormone to regulate it. In the anterior pituitary glands, you have the ACTH hormone. In the hypothalamus, you have CRH to release to activate it. Uh, the uh, adrenal pituitary, sorry, anterior pituitary glands release the FSH and LH. These are uh, gonads hormones. They are A regulating hormone, they are also regulated by the uh, GnRH release from the hypothalamus. The uh, anterior pituitary gland release the TSH that is regulated by the TRH from the hypothalamus. Uh, prolactin regulated by the TRH. Uh, dopamine also released to inhibit the not promote the release of prolactin. So you can see that the, um, these hormones, different hormones released from the anterior pituitary glands are in fact one-on-one -on -one regulated by the 
hormone produced and released from the hypothalamus. So that's the close connection between hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So that leads to the uh, the next like uh, uh, topic about the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus hormones basically is is the hormone don't really have like a far reaching like a target organ. They although they release the hormone into the blood, but they simply act on the target organ organ just right next to it. They act on the anterior pituitary glands. Here we have list of hormones all from the hypothalamus, but they don't really act different organ. They all act on the anterior pituitary glands. Even though they act on the same glands, they act on different neuronal groups in the anterior pituitary glands. And uh, to cause this group of neurons to release their hormones, uh, CRH, to stimulate the release of the ACTH, uh, dopamine inhibit the release of prolactin, uh, prolactin releasing hormone, promote the release of prolactin, uh, growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH, stimulate the release of the growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland, gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH, stimulates the uh, luteinizing hormone, LH, and the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, from the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, somatostatin inhibits the release of the TSH from the anterior pituitary gland. TRH stimulates the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary gland. So you, here you can see the list. Uh, so in a way that the hormone release from the hypothalamus are all something like something releasing, something releasing, something releasing hormone. So, and, and the, the hormone from the anterior pituitary gland are something uh, stimulating, like uh, what's that? Uh, follicle stimulating, like uh, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormones, and uh, um, so, so the name, you can see some patterns here, uh, um, and uh, you should know that um, the hormones from the hypothalamus basically release these hormones directly X on the anterior pituitary gland to cause them to release another group's hormone. All right, so that's the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Let's move on to the next one. So in the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, there is a lot of information there. I will focus on the posterior as the priority. So you at least you need to memorize that ADH and uh, oxytocin are <laughs> where they are located, where they are released, and what's their function. As for the anterior and the hypothalamus, um, focus on the thyroid and uh, adrenal cortex related because that's the one that we will also talk about. Like right now, we are going to talk about the thyroid gland. Um, so thyroid gland uh, is the gland located in our, it's kind of like almost like if it's uh, uh, 
if there is uh, like a, a swelling or uh, something, we probably can also see it in our neck. So they are located right in our uh, trachea location and uh, uh, and this is the group of the cells form this organ like a butterfly shed organ. This is the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland has one group of cells. This is called the follicular cells right here. So this is the follicular cell. Follicular cells are the cells, the epithelium cells. They form the follicle. Follicle is like a little, like a ball. And the inside of this ball is fluid. So each ball is encapsulated by this follicular cells. These follicular cells produce the thyroid hormone, T3, T4, and they will store this T3, T4 in, inside of this follicle. Inside of this uh, uh, follicle has this uh, 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 T3 and T4. So uh, uh, T3 is triiodothyronine hormone and the T4 is thyroxine hormone. Uh, in addition to that, that's a major cell, major group of cells in the thyroid. In addition to that, we have another smaller amount of cells. They are called uh, para follicular cells right here, parafollicular cells. These parafollicular cells also release group hormone. This group hormone is called uh, uh, calcitonin. And the function of the calcitonin is to regulate the calcium. Just by name, you can see that it's calcium related. And it's calcium related means that it basically responds to the over the higher calcium in the blood. So if the blood has too much calcium and uh, this portion will release calcium tonin to push this calcium out of the blood and to return it, re to reduce it in order to return it back to the normal level. So inside of this follicle, this is the term I was looking for, colloid. Inside of the follicle, this fluid is called colloid. And in the colloid, we have this uh, T3 and T4. This T3 and the T4 are not freely diffused. They bond on a large glycoprotein called thyroglobulin. So here is the idea about this thyroglobulin, this large glycoproteins located in the colloid inside of this follicle. And, uh, and you can see that it basically is like a string of like a necklace, something like that. Here it only show you two. Um, this uh, tyrosine is the precursor of the thyroid hormone. T3 and the T4 represent the amount of the iodine in the hormone. T3 has three iodine, T4 has four iodine. And uh, these end products are all produced from the same precursor called tyrosine. In the thyroglobulin, this necklet connects about hundreds of these tyrosine. And the process is to decorate this tyrosine to make them a T3 and a T4. So you can see that this 
this uh, uh are the major one in this pond, this like a little part of the fluid called colloid. And uh, each one of it carries hundreds of this either T3 or T4 or the precursor, the uh, tyrosine. So that's the ecosystem in this colloid. And uh, they are not released until they receive the TSH, uh, stimulating hormone. Now let's compare T3 and T4 first. We have T3 and T4. These are all thyroid hormone. Why do we need both? Why are both? What's the difference? T3 and T4. Um, T3 is more, if you want to memorize it, just remember that T3 is more potent, T4 is more abundant. So we have um, T3 and T4, but T3 is more potent, means it's more active and uh, has higher reactive uh, rates. So when they are released, they are quickly ex on the cells and, uh, and, uh, and provide its function. Because they are very reactive, their lifetime is also very short, much shorter. And so in our blood, we don't really see a lot of T3, although that's the one to provide the function because they react very quickly and they got disappeared. The blood, what we see most is the T4. That's why when you do the thyroid exam, uh, the major one we major is the T4. T4 represents the amount of the thyroid hormone in the body, in the blood. T4 is more abundant, it's more stable, it's less potent. So when T4 basically can serve as the reservoir of the thyroid hormone in the blood, and they are not reactive yet, and when they, when they when, when T3 are all used up, T4 then be converted to T3 to become an active uh, thyroid hormone. So that's the difference between T3 and T4. One is more potent, the, the other one is more abundant. More abundant also refers to a longer like half lifetime in the blood. So uh, the the release of the regulation of the uh, thyroid from the thyroid hormone from the thyroid glands are regulated by the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. So hypothalamus will release TRH as everything like. Releasing hormone, releasing hormone, that's the one released from the hypothalamus. Then it's not acting anywhere else but acting on the pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland. Then anterior pituitary gland release, re receive that signal and then release the TSH, the stimulating hormone. TSH then acts on the thyroid gland. Um, then this uh, T3 and the T4 are then released into the blood. We have more T4 than T3. T3 are more potent. So when the, we have more T4 and T3, when T3 is used up, T4 then be converted to T3 to become the potent one, to become the active one. T4 acts like the reservoir that it lives for a longer time, and uh, these are not as potent as the T3. 
when they release T3 and T4, thyroid release T3 and T4, they also send a negative feedback to the, the manufacturer, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, to tell them that, okay, we have enough, we have a lot of T thyroid hormone, so don't stimulate us anymore. Um, and so that will reduce the amount of the TSH, a lower TSH, the lower stimulation, a lower production of T3 and T4. And so that's the way that a negative feedback is commonly used uh, uh, mechanism to maintain the homeostasis, to maintain the stable concentration of, of this hormone in the blood. If it's too much, it sends a negative feedback, a less stimulus to, 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 to stimulate the thyroid to produce a less amount of T3 and T4. If this is too low, then the negative feedback is reduced. P2 again will release more, it has less, you know, uh, inhibition and that will produce more TSH exonic thyroid glands to produce more T3 and T4. So that's how it's been regulated. Um, the next question is what's their function? So the thyroid, horm thyroid hormones function, uh, the very essential function is to regulate our metabolic rate. So that basically is to regulate how fast our cells use up this fuel. When they use up this fuel, they produce ATP, and the cell cell is a lot more ATP to work. Uh, the person will be more active, more sensitive, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, the less thyroid will reduce this metabolic rate and uh, to reduce the rate that cell use the fuel to use less of the glucose. And then the person will generate less ATP. There will be more glucose in the body to get stored in the adipocytes. <clears throat> so the person will gain weight a little bit and uh, not be able to, you know, uh, as active or as sensitive as, as the one that has uh, produced too much of the thyroid. So the uh, thyroid effects affects the metabolic rate, uh, uh, affects our adipota, uh, sorry, appetite that if we use too use more uh, the fuel, then we will take more food to uh, replenish all this loss of the fuel. And uh, it will increase the blood flow, increase heart rate, increase the cardiac output, and uh, the mental process are excited by the thyroid hormone. So, so sometimes that, you know, when people feel tired, when people feel not active, one possibility is the low hypothyroid, low, low, low thyroid hormone, hypothyroidism. So, so there, there could be several reasons, like lack of the sleep could be another reason, right? This is very common that nowadays people, you know, sacrifice the time of sleep to do what? Studying? or you know partying but um but uh, it could be the hormones issue so so that lead to the the small discussion about these two um condition hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism uh, too much of the thyroid or too too little of the thyroid in the blood so let's look at the hypo first. Hypothyroidism means that we have little T3 and T4 
usually we measure T4 because T4 is more abundant and, and more stable in the blood. So with hypo, we will have lower T4 in the body. This hypo can be derived in two forms. One is called primary hypothyroidism. The other one is the secondary hypothyroidism. If it's primary, it means that it caused by the cause is in thyroid glands itself. So thyroid gland release less hypothyroidism. Sorry, thyroid gland release less thyroid hormone. And, uh, and so we have low T4 in the beginning. So like here, this one release lower T4. When T4 is low in the blood, we have less negative feedback. So the pituitary gland will release more TSH. So in the primary hypothyroidism, we expect to see a low T4, but high TSH, okay? So that is the very uh, usable uh, differentiate diagnosis to distinguish between hyper, sorry, to distinguish between primary hypothyroidism versus the secondary hypothyroidism. So if it's secondary, it's, it means that the original cause is not in the thyroid itself. So thyroid is healthy. The problem is in the pituitary glands or in the hypothalamus. So this one is also called central hypothyroidism because that happens, the problem is in the brain. So in this case, we will have low TSH, low TSH, low stimulus, low production of the T4. So with the secondary hypothyroidism, we expect to see a low T4 and a low TSH. So to distinguish between primary and secondary hypothyroidism, we basically have to look into TSH. If the TSH is high, then it's a primary hypothyroidism. If the TSH is low, it's a secondary hypothyroidism. So this one is also a quiz question. So say, which condition represent the primary hypothyroidism? High T4, high TSH, low T4, low TSH, low T4, high TSH, low T4, low TSH, et cetera. So you just need to pick the one that match the primary or the secondary hypothyroidism. This is a very common like, questions to, to, to make a very effective uh, differentiate diagnosis between, between different type of the uh, uh, thyroid uh, uh, conditions. So at the un another extreme is the high, so this one is, sorry, this one is the uh, the cause, the cause of the hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism, the primary hypothyroidism is the low production of T4. What caused that? What caused the hypothyroidism? There are two major causes. In the world, uh, the, the common cause is the iron deficiency because the production of the thyroid hormone require iron However, people don't really get iodine that easily. In nowadays, in the modern society, uh, in the old time, people get iodine from the, basically a lot of those are from the seafood. Um, but not everybody can get seafood that easily. Um, so, so nowadays that in the modern society, uh, we 
basically put the iodine with the with the salt. And so when we eat, we make salt, we add salt, we basically add some iodine in it. And so nowadays that in the modern society, we don't have a lot of the iodine deficiency caused hypothyroidism. In America, the major one become the another disease is called Hashimoto disease. This is an autoimmune disease that our body produce antibody to attack the thyroid gland. And, uh, and, uh, and so that's become the major cause of the hypothyroidism in America. And then here, the picture showing you the symptom of the hypothyroidism. You, what you need to think about is that thyroid hormone related to our metabolic rate. So the lower T3 and T4 has lower metabolic rate means that our body, our cells use glucose less, produce ATP less. When our body produce ATP less, um, our body will generate less heat. Because when we basically use the ATP to say muscle movement, only 30% of that energy is to use to generate the force. The other large portion over like 50% of those are, gen are used to generate heat. So, so, um, so for people with hypothyroidism, the, the heat generated by the body is extremely reduced. So the person will feel cold because the body doesn't generate heat that much. And there will be a little bit uh, tiring, it's not energized, it's feel like weakness. But the major thing, see, will, it was, major thing you will see is that it feel, he or she will feel cold very easily. And the diagnosis is the blood test. We test the T3 and the T4. We also can test the antibody to see whether that is the uh, So this slide should be the next one. I am sorry about that. But uh, this one is about hyperthyroidism. Okay, so for the diagnosis of the hypo, we detect T3 and T4. We also use the antibody to detect the Hashimoto diseases. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is the body generate too much of the thyroid hormone. So we will have the um, uh, the high T T four, and uh, the majority of the hyperthyroidism is the Graves' disease. That is another type of the antibody to to act on the thyroid glands to produce the T4. So with the hyperthyroidism, we have the increased T4, uh, low TSH, because high T4 inhibit the production of the TSH, and uh, um, the antibody to act on the thyroid gland, that is also called the Gravis disease. So with the hyperthyroidism, we have the generate a lot of heat and uh, um, cannot easily go into sleep, uh, weight loss, and uh, heart rate rhythmic become unstable is called tachyarrhythmia. 
sweating a lot because of the heat, anxiety because of mental excitement. So the cause of the hyperthyroidism, as we kind of mentioned about it, the major cause is the uh, autoimmune disease. That is also called Graves' disease. That is the antibody X on the thyroid glands. Um, so with the hyperthyroidism, ideally, ideally we could also have the secondary hyperthyroidism, but it's, it's rare. The major hyperthyroidism is caused by the primary, and so we will have higher T4 and low TSH. Um, and the, the cause of this hyperthyroidism, uh, the major cause is called Graves' disease that antibody acts on, resem resemble the TSH to act on the thyroid glands. Another cause is the multinodular goiter. That's the, that's a, like a overproduction of these follicular cells in the thyroid gland to produce the T, T3 and T4. So this one showing you that's the uh, cause of the, the common cause of the hyperthyroidism uh, that we have the, the major, the, the most common one is the Graves' disease. That means that uh, the antibody resume that simulate this uh, TSH to act on the thyroid gland to produce the hormone. Another is the multinodular goiter. Another one is benignant tumor, that overproduction of these follicular cells. A fourth one is if the person take the pill uh, to regulate body's thyroid, thyroid hormone, if the pill is overdosed, then the person will have more T3 and T4. All this will provide a negative feedback to the pituitary glands to cause it reduce the production of the TSH. So in the major like the type of the the common type of the hyperthyroidism, we have more T4 in the body while we have low TSH in the body. Um, there are, uh, so when, when we see people has a swelled uh, like neck, we can think about that the person may have thyroid issue. The person may have the, it's called the goiter, like the, 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 the enlargement of the thyroid gland. When the person has the goiter, please don't just think that this one has the hyperthyroidism uh, because of the multinodular goiter uh, or the benign tumor or even tumor. This could be either hyper or hypo. The reason is that if the person has hypothyroidism, say in the old time, like patients with iron that deficiency, that the diet doesn't have, doesn't contain enough iron, then the patients will produce that T4. Consequently, the T SH will be increased to stimulate the thyroid to produce the T3 and T4. So that TSH stimulation could cause the thyroid enlargement, and that could be a cause of the goiter. So the goiter could be the 
hypothyroidism related, or it could be the hyperthyroidism related. So the goiter could be either one of it. So that's the thyroid gland. The very last one is about the parathyroid gland. So parathyroid gland is also uh, located in the, embedded in the, we have about uh, four, two pairs or three pairs of the parathyroid glands underneath the thyroid glands. So what's their function? Their function is to regulate calcium. Uh, they basically is very much like acts with, counteracts with the uh, para, parafollicular cells. Uh, in the in the parathyroid glands, they release the parathyroid hormone PTH. That one is to increase the calcium amount in the body. So they will act on. So basically, this one responds to the low calcium in the blood. If the calcium in the blood is low, then it will, TSH will act on the kidney to reabsorb more calcium because our blood calcium level is already low. It will also act on the, activate the vitamin D. Vitamin D is hormone to regulate our calcium level. It will increase our calcium reabsorption in the small intestine, in our GI system gastrointestinal system to reabsorb more calcium. So all together will increase our calcium level. It will also cause, trigger the calcium release from the bone. Bone is a region, is an organ to store calcium. And that all together will increase to regain the calcium level in the blood. Calcium is very important ion in a lot of cell function. So we need to maintain a certain level of calcium level in the blood. So in thyroid, uh, even though the major hormone is the thyroid hormone, the T3 and T4, to regulate our body metabolic rate, we also have these two group of cells produce different hormones to regulate our calcium. The parafollicular cells produce the calcium tonin in response to the high calcium level in the blood. And that causes a reduce of the calcium in the blood. We also have these parathyroid glands to reduce the parathyroid hormone that will increase the calcium level in the blood. So these two counteract with each other. In the end, we basically trying to maintain a stable concentration of the calcium in the blood. So that's the thyroid glands. Hope that kind of give you a good review about the production of the thyroid hormone, from the particular cells in the thyroid glands was the difference between T3 and T4. T3 is more potent, T4 is more abundant. And uh, we talk about the distinguished, like differentiated diagnosis of the hyper versus hypothyroidism. In the hypo, in the hyper, hyper means a lot, right? The major hyperthyroidism is the Graves disease. Uh, one student told me that the way to memorize it is to think about the gravy, right? You want more gravy, right? So it's hyper, it's a lot. And uh, it's an antibody acts on the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormone. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, as for the hypo, we have the primary hypo versus the secondary hypo. The primary hypo includes two causes. One is the iodine deficiency, the other one is the Hashimoto disease. And uh, uh, so that's the, in, a, in addition to the T3 and T4, we also have these two group of the hormone, as I mentioned, as 
today, right here, that parafollicular cells produce the calcine tonin to respond to the higher calcine level to reduce the calcine level, parathyroid hormone to reduce the P, uh, TH to respond to the low calcine level to increase the calcium level in the blood. So that's that. And, uh, um, and uh, I will, we will talk about the next portion of the endocrine system in the next topic. Okay, thank you. Let me know if you have any question. Thank you.